FIFA suspends All India Football Federation, India will not host the Under-17 Women's World Cup now. AIFF suspended due to third-party interference. CCPA imposes 1 lakh rupees fine on Flipkart. It violated the Bureau of Indian Standards provisions. Earlier, Amazon was fined for the same fault. Arctic is warming four times faster than the world. In some parts of the Arctic, the temperature increasing rate is seven times higher. Researchers have revealed this fact. Another major victory for transgender, Aeromedical Assessment Guidelines for Transgender amended. Transgenders can also become a pilot now. Delhi is the most polluted city in the world. Kolkata is the second most polluted city in the world. State of Global Air Initiative claims. Recently, FIFA, that is International Federation of Association Football, suspended AIFF, that is All India Football Federation. Due to this, the hosting of FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup 2022 has also been taken away from India, which was to be held in October 2022. FIFA has cited third-party interferences as the reason for the suspension. The third-party interferences violates FIFA's constitutional provisions and rules. The All India Football Federation is facing the suspension of FIFA for the first time in its 85-year history. In this context, the third party means the Supreme Court of India. Actually, the matter is that NCP leader Praful Patel was the president of AIFF since 2009. He completed his three consecutive term of four years in 2020. As per the provisions of AIFF, the term of office of the AIFF president is four years. In addition, no person can remain the AIFF president for more than three times. Now, FIFA wanted that elections should be held in AIFF and the federation should be reconstituted so that the future strategy could be decided under the provisions of FIFA and AIFF. After this, the matter was taken up in the Supreme Court. After a long hearing, the Supreme Court constituted a committee in 2020. This committee was given the task of conducting elections in AIFF, implementing the provisions of FIFA and preparing for the Football World Cup. However, the committee failed to carry out the task as directed by the Apex Court due to interferences of the AIFF members. Hence, the committee asked the Supreme Court to take action against the AIFF members. Post this, the Apex Court removed Praful Patel from the post of AIFF president. The court also postponed the elections which were scheduled for December 2020. FIFA has objected that it does not want the interferences of any third party that is, government or other committees. Therefore, it suspended AIFF from FIFA. AIFF was established in 1937 and its headquarters are located in New Delhi. AIFF got FIFA affiliation in 1948. Union Minister Bhupendra Yadav has recently announced that a new elephant reserve will be notified in India. He made this announcement during a program organized in Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary in Kerala on the occasion of the World Elephant Day on 12th August. It is to be noted that this will be the 31st elephant sanctuary in India and it will be established in the Agastyamalai landscape of Tamil Nadu. This sanctuary will be spread over an area of about 1,197 square kilometers. It is noteworthy that Agastyamalai or Agastyamala is one of the 18 biosphere reserves spread across India. The Agastyamala Biosphere Reserve was also included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves in 2016 under UNESCO's Man and the Biosphere Program. Significantly, Indian elephants are found in 16 states of India, including Central and Southern Western Ghats, Northeast India, Eastern India and parts of Northern India and Southern Peninsular India. The population of elephants had become critically low in 1992. The population of Indian elephants declined sharply due to illegal trade. The central government started Project Elephant in 1992 to increase the population of elephants by conserving their natural habitat. 
the elephant has been included in schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and Appendix 1 of CITES, that is Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. According to the latest census of elephants done in 2017, there are about 27,312 elephants in India. As per the census, Karnataka has the highest number of elephants, followed by Assam and Kerala. A recent research has revealed that the Arctic has been warming about four times faster than the rest of the world in the last 40 years. The research has been published in the journal Communications Earth and Environment. Before this research, scientists believe that the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. A team of researchers based in Norway and Finland has provided the information by analyzing temperature data collected from satellites since 1979. It means that presently, the Arctic is on average about 3 degrees Celsius warmer than in 1980. This shows that the Arctic is warming by 0.75 degrees Celsius per decade. It is a matter of concern as the Arctic contains sensitive climate components. Research reveals that the rate of increase in temperature in some parts of the Arctic Ocean is up to seven times. These especially include Norway and the Barents Sea in the north of Russia. Researchers believe that with the warming of the Arctic, its glaciers will melt. It will affect the water level in the sea around the world. The increase in Arctic temperatures will also affect Greenland's ice sheets. If Greenland's ice sheets will melt completely, then the water level of the world's ocean would rise by about 6 meters. Researchers are of the view that the cause of the rapid warming of the Arctic lies in sea ice. Sea ice is covered with a shiny layer of snow. It reflects about 85% of the solar radiation coming from space. On the contrary, solar radiation gets absorbed in the open or normal sea. When the Arctic Ocean is covered with sea ice, then it acts like a large reflective blanket. It reduces the absorption of solar radiation and with the melting of the sea ice, the absorption rate of solar radiation also increases. It results in the creation of a positive feedback loop in which warming of the sea causes the sea ice to melt and as a result, the rate of sea warming increases. The Arctic is a polar region located in the northern part of the Earth. It covers an area equal to one-sixth of the Earth's landmass, which is roughly equal to that of the combined area of Russia, China and India. The Arctic region includes the Arctic Ocean, adjacent seas and Alaska, Canada, Finland, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Russia and Sweden. India's association with the Arctic is almost nine decades old. India has been associated with the Arctic since signing of the Svalbard Treaty in Paris in February 1920. According to a recent news report, excessive obstruction is being observed in the flow of the Bagmati River. As per media reports, debris and garbage are causing obstructions in its flow. With this, it has become one of the most polluted rivers of Nepal these days. It has turned into a sewage canal due to the dumping of untreated waste. In fact, as soon as the Bagmati River reaches the Kathmandu Valley, its color changes from white to brown and then turns black. Later on, it gets choked or engulfed by debris. Significantly, Bagmati is considered quite pious in Nepal. In Nepal, it is considered as sacred as the Ganges. Being the holy river of Nepal, the last rites are performed on the banks of the Bagmati River. It is believed that Bagmati purifies people. It is to be noted that Bagmati originates from the Shivpuri Ranges located in the Himalayas. Shivpuri Range is located in the northeast direction, 16 kilometers away from Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. Bagmati separates the city of Kathmandu from Patan. It descends from the mountains near Nunthar, passing through eight districts of Nepal. From here, it flows about 70 km straight in the south direction and enters the village of Shurvatia in the Sitamari district of Bihar. Later on, it joins the Kosi River in the state of Bihar. Significantly, Bagmati is considered sacred by both Hindus and Buddhists. 
Several Hindu temples are situated on the banks of the Bagmati River. The famous Pashupati Nath Temple of Nepal is situated on the banks of this river. In Nepal, it is also called the Sapt Bagmati, which is a combined stream of Manimati, Rudramati, Hanumanti, Vishnumati, Bhadramati, Manohara and Bagmati. According to a recent research, the genome of a fruit fly is not only made up of fruit fly DNA but it also includes the genome of a bacterium. It is the largest transfer of genetic material from bacteria to animals ever discovered. The research has been carried out by the Institute for Genome Sciences School of Medicine at the University of Maryland. Researchers used genetic long-read sequencing technology to show how genes from the Wolbachia bacteria incorporated themselves into the genome of the fruit flies up to 8,000 years ago. In this context, the researchers have, have argued that their findings suggest that genetic variation is not always small, incremental and predictable which is in contrast to Darwin's, Finch's or Mendy's peas. Scientist Barbara McClintock first identified jumping genes in the 1940s. These genes can be transferred to the genomes of other species. Significantly, 75% of the genes that cause human disease can also be found in the fruit fly. Wolbachia is an intracellular bacterium which infects various types of insects. Wolbachia transmits its genes through female egg cells. Some research has revealed that these infections are more mutualistic than parasitic and it benefits the insects. In fact, these type of infections in insects lead to the development of immunity against some viruses. The scientific name of the fruit fly is Drosophila melanogaster, an adult fruit fly is yellowish-brown in color and is about 3 mm in length and 2 mm in width. These flies are one of the most destructive pets of fruits and vegetables worldwide. The fruit fly is one of the most important model organism in genetic research. Hence, the fruit flies are being used by researchers in their studies to discover the basic laws of inheritance for about 100 years. However, the genome of the fruit flies is about 25 times smaller than the human genome. But many of the genes in these flies are analogous to those of humans and control similar biological functions. Recently, the Union Cabinet took a major decision on TKDL, that is, Traditional Knowledge Digital Library Database. It has been decided that this database will be accessible to users other than patent offices. According to the Government of India, the establishment of the library has been envisaged under the new Education Policy 2020 to develop thought and knowledge, leadership through the Indian knowledge tradition. The move will promote research and development and innovation in various fields based on India's valuable heritage. It is worth mentioning that the traditional knowledge digital library in India was established in 2001. It was developed to preserve traditional systems of medicine and wellness from our country. It also aims to prevent misuse of Indian traditional knowledge in international patent offices. This library is available in five languages, that is, English, German, French, Japanese and Spanish. It is a joint initiative of CSIR, that is the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Ministry of Science and Technology, Department of Ayush, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. It is being implemented at the CSIR. More than 3.6 lakh formulas or practices have been added to this database so far. CSIR had won the case against the US patent for the antiseptic properties of turmeric. Actually, the US Patent and Trademark Office had granted a patent for the antiseptic properties of turmeric to two researchers from the University of Mississippi in 1994. India had claimed that the antiseptic properties of turmeric have been mentioned in the traditional knowledge as well as the Ayurvedic texts of the country. Consequently, the patents of both the researchers were cancelled by the US Patent and Trademark Office in 1997. Similarly, the European Patent Office gave a patent for neem as an insecticide or fungicide to an agriculture-based multinational company in 1995. 
This case was also won by India based on the claim that such information is already mentioned in the traditional knowledge of India. Hence, the significance of traditional knowledge digital library increases many folds. According to data, the healthcare needs of more than 70% of Indians and the livelihood of millions of Indians depend on traditional medicine. Recently, the Reserve Bank of India has disallowed the letters of comfort issued by the corporates. Consequently, the business class will no longer be able to use the letter of comfort to borrow loans. Experts hold that loans of about 35,000 crore rupees could be affected due to this ban. Earlier, the Ministry of Finance had also barred ministries and departments from issuing letters of comfort in April 2022. The ministry wanted to usher in transparency and stability to the financial market by disallowing the letters of comfort. A letter of comfort is a supporting document that is issued in favour of the borrower. It is generally issued by a third party or the concerned stakeholder. For example, a letter of comfort can be issued by a holding company to its subsidiary company and the government to its public sector enterprises. It can also be issued by banks, NBFCs and auditors. The letter of comfort is not legally binding or an obligation by the holding company to repay the loans. It is just an assurance to the lender that the holding company is aware of the transaction, the policies of the subsidiary and its intentions in seeking a loan. This provides some comfort to the financial institutions to lend money for short term or long term. One can say that the letter of comfort could become a moral obligation and not a legal one. Recently, CCPA, that is Central Consumer Protection Authority, has imposed a fine of 1 lakh rupees on Flipkart. This fine has been imposed on Flipkart for allowing the sale of poor quality pressure cookers on its platforms. It is worth noting that the CCPA had earlier also fined Amazon. Amazon was also fined 1 lakh rupees for selling pressure cookers that did not meet the quality standards. The Domestic Pressure Cooker Quality Control Order 2020 was issued by the Government of India as per the provisions of the Section 16.1 of the Bureau of Indian Standards Act. Under this order, domestic pressure cookers have been placed under mandatory certification after 1st February 2021. The government had also made it mandatory to use the quality mark in view of the customer safety. Hence, all domestic pressure cookers are required to conform to the IS 2347-S2 standards. Flipkart and Amazon are e-commercial platforms. They provide a platform for buyers and sellers to buy and sell goods. E-commercial trade in India is regulated under various existing rules and regulations. These acts include Income Tax Act of 1961, Consumer Protection Act of 2019, Information Technology Act of 2000, Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999, Payments and Settlement System Act of 2007, Companies Act of 2013, and Goods and Services Tax Act 2017. Section 94 of the Consumer Protection Act of 2019 deals with measures for preventing unfair trade. The CCPA is a regulatory body it was established in 2020 based on the provisions of the Consumer Protection Act of 2019. CCPA works under the administrative control of the Ministry of Consumer Affairs. Its function is to promote, protect and enforce the rights of consumers as a class. DGCA, that is Directorate General of Civil Aviation, has issued guidelines related to the aeromedical evaluation of transgender persons for the first time. It aims to ease the provisions related to transgender aeromedical assessment. It is worth noting, it includes all three categories of pilot's license. The three categories of licenses are private, commercial and student license. The DGCA has stated that such transgender candidates who have completed their hormone therapy and gender-affirming surgery five years ago may be declared medically fit, provided they clear screening for mental health in accordance with World Professional Association for Transgender Health. Actually, a transgender person has to go through various adverse mental situations during gender affirmation. Apart from this, it is also necessary for a pilot to be mentally fit to fly an aircraft. Hence, such applicants will also have to undergo psychological evaluation along with their hormone therapy. Only then, they will be declared fit. 
DGCA has made these amendments as per the demands of the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Actually, a transgender named Adam Harry went to South Africa from India to take aviation training in the year 2016. However, after his identity as a transgender person was exposed on social media, his parents called him back to India and put him under house arrest for nearly 10 months. Later, the government of Kerala awarded him a scholarship to complete his training at the Rajiv Gandhi Academy for Aviation Technology. However, DGCA in April 2020 rejected his medical clearance needed to obtain a student's pilot license. After this incident, the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment wrote a letter to the DGCA terming their policy as discriminatory and violative of the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act 2019. The ministry also demanded medical guidelines for issuing a pilot license to transgender candidates. Significantly, the Transgender Persons Act 2019 was passed to provide equal rights to transgender persons as other persons. According to the recently published Global Burden of Disease 2019 report, about half a billion people in the world were suffering from lower respiratory infections in 2019. It included 257 million men and 232 million women. This report also reveals that worldwide, 1.2 million men and 1.30 million women died due to various lower respiratory infections in 2019. 204 countries and territories were included in this report. This report assessed the burden and trends of LRIs and risk factors across all age groups by gender. This report was prepared by IHME, that is Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. The researchers used the Cause of Death Ensemble Modeling Strategy or DISMOD MR 2.1 for conducting this study. It is worth noting that this mode MR is a Bayesian meta-regression tool. Under this, data is obtained from various sources and then a report is prepared by compiling the relevant information from it. The report mentions that in 2019, the age standardized incidence was 1.17 times higher in males as compared to females, while the mortality rate was 1.31 times higher in males as compared to females. The age standardized death rate is the average age specific mortality rate per 1 lakh persons. The report also mentions that men aged 70 years and older had the greatest increase in lower respiratory infections and deaths. The report reveals that 1 in 5 people between 15 to 49 years, both males and females, died of lower respiratory infections globally in 2019 due to smoking. It was also observed that between 1990 and 2019, LRI incidence and mortality rates declined at different rates across age groups. The system of the body, which takes the oxygen from the atmosphere and carries it to the internal cells of the body, and releases the carbon dioxide present in the internal cells of the body into the external atmosphere is called the respiratory system. It is divided into two main parts, known as the upper and lower respiratory tracts. The upper respiratory system consists of the nose or nostrils, the nasal cavity and the pharynx, while the lower respiratory system includes the larynx, trachea, bronchi and lungs. The structure of the human respiratory system starts from the nostrils and ends to the lungs and diaphragm. Recently, a new report was released by the US-based Health Effects Institute, State of Global Air Initiative. The report presents a comprehensive analysis of air pollution and global health impacts for more than 7,000 cities around the world. The report analyzes the condition of the air based on two dangerous pollutants, particulate matter that is. 2.5 and nitrogen dioxide. The report reveals worrying figures for India. According to the report, the air in India's capital Delhi is the worst among 7,000 cities in the world in terms of PM 2.5 level. Kolkata stands second among India's neighboring countries. Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, stands fifth. Karachi, a city in Pakistan, stands eighth. And the capital of China, Beijing, stands ninth. The air in Delhi and Kolkata is polluted due to fine particulate matter 2.5, while the air in Shanghai in China and Moscow in Russia is polluted due to nitrogen dioxide. 
The report claims that 1.7 million deaths related to PM 2.5 exposure occurred in 7,239 cities in 2019 and 2020 worldwide. The greatest impact of air pollution on health was seen in cities of Asia, Africa, and Eastern and Central Europe. In addition, air pollution is responsible for one out of every nine deaths worldwide. 67 lakh persons died in 2019 due to air pollution. 106 persons per one lakh of population in Delhi, and 99 persons per one lakh population in Kolkata died due to air pollution in 2019 and 20. According to the WHO's air quality database, currently only 117 countries have a ground level monitoring system to track PM 2.5. Moreover, only 74 countries have adopted the nitrogen dioxide level monitoring system. Recently, an early childhood development conclave was organized in Mumbai. During this conclave, the Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare launched the Palan 1000 national campaign and parenting app through a virtual medium. It aims to establish a platform for the physical, mental, cognitive, and emotional development of children up to the age of two years. The Palan 1000 campaign focuses on developing the intelligence and analytical ability of children in the first two years of their life. Under this campaign, the training needs of parents. and other caregivers related to child rearing in the early years will be fulfilled since infants and toddlers learn on the basis of experience which children acquire by observing their caregivers hence the experience of the caregivers in the first year of a child's life is very important the cognitive development of children less than 2 years of age is a major focus area of the palan 1000 campaign cognitive development focuses on six principles These principles include maximizing love, talking and engaging, exploring through movement and play, reading and discussing stories, mother's engagement with the child during breastfeeding, managing stress and staying calm. Palan 1000 parenting app will provide caregivers with practical advice on what they can do in their everyday routine and will help resolve the various doubts of parents. It will aid the parents to prepare guidelines for the child's development. The government of India has taken many meaningful steps towards reducing child mortality in the last few years. Consequently, India has registered a reduction of 10 points in child mortality. The child mortality rate in India was 45 per 1000 live children in 2014. However, it declined to 35 in 2019. Let us now look at the five question based on today's bulletin. Questions for this series are first question is consider the following statements one the hosting rights of FIFA under 17 women's world cup 2022 have been snatched from India and given to Russia two all india football federation is the apex body of football in india which of the above statement or statements is or are correct one only two only one and two only or neither one nor two Next question is consider the following statements. One recently the CCPA that is Central Consumer Protection Authority imposed a fine of one lakh rupees on Flipkart. Two the domestic pressure cooker quality control order was issued in twenty twenty. Three CCPA was established in twenty twenty. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two and three only, one and three only. or 1 2 and 3 next question is consider the following statements with reference to the agatsya mala biosphere one india's 31st elephant sanctuary is being established in the agatsya malai region of tamil nadu two agatsya malai is one of the 18 biosphere reserves spread across india three agatsya mala biosphere region was granted the status of World Biosphere Reserve by UNESCO in 2016 which of the above statement or statements is or are correct 3 only 2 only 2 and 3 only or all of the above next question is consider the following statements one upper respiratory system includes nose nasal cavity and pharynx two Lower respiratory system includes larynx, trachea, bronchi and lungs. 
विच ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट और स्टेटमेंट्स इज और आर करेक्ट वन ओनली टू ओनली बोथ वन एंड टू और नीदर वन और टू लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज पालन 1000 थाउजेंड नेशनल कैंपेन एंड पेरेंटिंग एप वर लॉन्च फ्रॉम विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्लेसेस मुंबई कोलकाता गुजरात और हरियाणा रिसेंटली फाइव हंड्रेड सिटीज अक्रॉस इंडिया हैव डिक्लेयर दैम सेल्स एज सफाई मित्र सुरक्षित शहर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम दिस डेक्लेशन इज इन लाइन विद द लॉन्ग टर्म गोल ऑफ कन्वर्टिंग एवरी मैन होल इन टू अ मशीन होल नाउ क्लीनिंग विल बी डन बाई सेप्टिक टैंक्स और सीवर मशीन इट इज नॉट वर्दी दैट द नमस्ते स्कीम वॉज लॉन्च टू डेवलप अ मैकेनाइज सैनिटेशन इको सिस्टम फॉर क्लीनिंग सीवर्स एंड सेप्टिक टैंक्स द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन डेवलपमेंट हैड लॉन्च द सफाई मित्र सुरक्षा चैलेंज ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ वर्ल्ड टॉयलेट डे इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन Recently a two day national security strategies conference was organized in Delhi. In the conference emphasis was laid upon the importance of human intelligence to curb terrorism. Various issues of national security including anti-terrorism, extremism were discussed in this conference. In addition issues related to counter terrorism measures, fundamentalism, issues related to cryptocurrency, counter rogue drone technology and challenges posed by Maoist groups were also discussed. Recently State Bank of India has opened its first branch specially dedicated for startups in Bengaluru. According to SBI this branch will provide financial support to entrepreneurs in the initial phase of setting up startup companies. In addition it will also house specialist officers for foreign exchange treasury solutions wealth management and credit requirements of startups. Recently at CSL that is Hooghly Cochin Shipyard Limited was dedicated to the nation. This shipyard is located in Havra district of West Bengal. It has been built by renovating a 200 year old shipyard located on the west bank of the Hooghly River. At CSL aims to become a leader in inland waterways ship building in India. Recently in a unique initiative Indian Railways has run a huge goods train with 295 coaches. The name of this freight train is Super Vasuki. It is about 3 and a half kilometers long. Its trial run was conducted between Korba in Chhattisgarh and Rajnandgaon in Nagpur on 15th August 2022. This trial run was carried out under the Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. According to the Indian Railways it took about 4 minutes for Super Vasuki to pass through a station during this run. Recently a bilateral military exercise that is Winbacks 2022 was organized between Vietnam and India. The exercise focused on deploying the army's engineering and medical teams in UN peacekeeping missions. For this purpose various campaigns related to public assistance were demonstrated during this exercise. Notably the Vietnam army has conducted a military exercise with a foreign army for the first time. The next edition of Winbacks will be held in Vietnam in 2023. Recently the Maharashtra government has announced to grant adventure sport status to Dahi Handi. The adventure sport tag will allow young participants or Govindas in Dahi Handi events to apply for government jobs under the sports quota Govindas or their families will be provided with compensation in case of fatal or other injuries suffered by the players during the formation of human pyramids In Dahi Handi game a pot of curd is tied to a rope at a height of several meters This pot is broken by the Govindas by forming a human pyramid This game is generally played on the occasion of Janmashtami Recently Goa has become the first Har Ghar Jal certified state. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu have become the first Har Ghar Jal certified union territories. All the villages in these states have declared themselves as Har Ghar Jal Gram through a resolution passed by the Gram Sabhas. Thus rural households in Goa, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu are now getting clean and safe drinking water through taps. The Jal Jeevan Mission was announced by the Government of India on 15th August 2019. This mission aims to supply drinking water of prescribed quality in sufficient quantity on regular and long term basis to every rural household of India by 2024. 
रिसेंटली अबाइल लेटरल एक्सरसाइज दैट इज उदार शक्ति वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बिटवीन द इंडियन एयरफोर्स एंड द रॉयल मलेशियन एयरफोर्स इन दिस एक्सरसाइज द टू एयर फोर्सेज को ऑपरेटेड इन द डिफेंस सेक्टर विच इज पिवोटल फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ रीजनल सिक्योरिटी सुखोई थर्टी एम के आई एंड सी सेवनटीन एयरक्राफ्ट ऑफ द इंडियन एयर फोर्स एज वेल एज सुखोई थर्टी एम के एम एयरक्राफ्ट ऑफ द मलेशियन एयर फोर्स वर इन्वॉल्व इन दिस एक्सरसाइज Recently India has designated 11 new wetlands as Ramsar sites. Now the number of Ramsar sites in India has increased from 64 to 75. The recently designated 11 new wetlands include four wetlands from Tamil Nadu namely Chitrangudi Bird Sanctuary, Suchindram Theru Wetland, Vaduvur Bird Sanctuary and Kanjirakulam Bird Sanctuary. Three wetlands from Odisha, namely Tampara Lake, Hirakud Reservoir, and Ansupa Lake. Two wetlands from Jammu and Kashmir, namely Hagum and Shalbag Wetland Conservation Reserves, and one wetland from Madhya Pradesh, namely Yashwant Sagar, and one wetland from Maharashtra, namely Thane Creek.